Well, everybody, with the sizzle season out, it's time once again to rank all the amazing kits and new weapons we got against each other to see which one is better. Now, keep in mind, this ranking is an objective fact that should not be questioned and applies at all levels of play. So if I see you using the 11th ranked weapon in C rank, please know you are absolutely doing a disservice to everyone in the game. Anyway, at number 11, we have the H3 Nozzle Nose D. And this might seem like a weird weapon to rank this low, but that just shows how stacked the kits are this season. Even the worst one of them is kind of just in the middle of things, and the main problem kind of just lies with the main weapon. H3 is incredibly slow, requiring precise aim with low damaged objects, high ink efficiency, and just very inconsistent of a weapon that's really struggled to keep up with the pacing of Splatoon 3. That already causes a lot of problems, and the kit is fine for what the weapon wants. It compensates for its speed quite a bit, with a splash wall to be able to slowly push ground forward and paint effectively, as well as a bubble, and you can very slowly take space with this weapon. The problem is, well, Comps that play this speed also are things that absolutely demolish Bubble. Mainly, they feature Splash and Crab Tank, so even in this slower playstyle, you're gonna encounter so many things that are good at dealing with your weapon. While Bubble did get some buffs, it only helps versus a few of the specials, way less impactful than you might think. So unless if you're running into a comp with Tena Missiles, which is still pretty rare, as we'll talk about later, it's not gonna be that much better. Still though, the main and special weapon getting a few buffs would definitely boost this up the list quite a bit, and I could see it having a future. At number 10 is the Anarchy Splattershot Nova, and I've seen a lot of mixed opinions on this weapon. Some people think it could be potentially really good, and some people think it's just okay. Well, from being 10th in this ranking, you can probably tell that I'm in the it's just okay category. And the main problem is I think its inkjet output compared to ballpoint isn't really that much better. Nova as a main weapon really struggles to fight, and while mine is fine on it in theory, and in fact has some decent synergy, it's not good enough to make up for a weapon this week. And while Inkjet is a very valuable special, it's really good to get your team in and also just to be something that can stay alive and not die as much. And if you're going to be sitting that far back to ensure that, a ballpoint does a much better job of doing that while applying ample pressure. Maybe if the main weapon got buffed a bit, I could see it having some use cases, and maybe some teams will try and push it and change my mind as things are right now, but at the moment, I just don't think there's enough of a reason to pick it over ballpoint. Next up, at number 8, the Big Swig Express. And man, this kit is so so close to being better, it's really a shame. Inkstorm is absolutely amazing on this weapon. While it does solidify it as a zones weapon more than anything else, it does make it a damn good one at that job, as the paint output as well as reliable damage between the horizontal flicks giant hitbox and the constant inkstorm is incredibly threatening. In long team fights, this thing will just absolutely slowly chip away at the amount of space you can move in, and its ability to paint the map as well as painting in general is uncontested by any other weapon. Unfortunately, Unfortunately though, while the main gun is really good, it does still struggle on retake, and the sub it got of line marker just doesn't work with this weapon much. It's way too situational to be a combo tool, especially for a weapon that prefers to just one shot or has a solid combo with 250 flicks anyway, and while as a mobility option, the vertical flick is fast and paints about as well as a ballpoint in terms of how far it can go, which is just so useful for movement already. I guess the location utility is kind of nice, but even then a point sensor would have done the job way better. And I think line marker just doesn't really do much for this weapon, and it's a bit more sub-dependent than I initially thought. Definitely a good zones niche, but I don't think it's much outside of that, unfortunately. Maybe with kit number three. Next up, we have our first new weapon of this list, the Pain Brush. And this is a weapon that has been absolutely terrorizing solo queue. I've already seen so many people calling Pain Brush users skillless, and I gotta be honest, guys, while the weapon is good, it definitely has its fair share of problems. The main one here is absolutely the ink efficiency. This weapon drains ink like crazy, even with a bit of main saver on, and it has a lot of whiting frames before you can recover your ink back. On top of all of that, while Curling Bomb is pretty useful as we'll talk about later, it's also a 70% sub that gives you barely any flicks afterward. This weapon just has a lot of downtime, and while I initially thought it could be a good supportive aggressive hybrid, I think the insane amount of time you have to spend recovering your ink really mitigates its ability to be a viable support option and pushes it into much more aggressive territory. That being said, it's not bad at that. The two-shot is incredibly threatening, the three-shot range is good, and the damage is much more reliable than something like Octobrush, which frequently struggles to get kills at its maximum range at higher levels of play. And while the startup lag is bad, it doesn't hurt its kill time that much, especially if you get the jump on your opponent, which most of the time is what the weapon plays for. Speaking of that, it's also why curling works so well. Vanilla Roller will often
and use it to kind of just move around, threaten to get up close and pop out on people. And Painbrush can do the same thing, well, assuming it doesn't run out of ink, which unfortunately prevents it from really using the bomb to its full extent. The thing that keeps it from being a bit lower on this list, though, is the Wavebreaker. There's not a lot of great Wavebreaker options besides Heavy, which is really only super usable when you don't have a ballpoint, something that's, well, quite popular right now as it's seen as the best weapon in the game. On top of that, even that is a backline weapon. There's no real great midline or aggressive Wavebreaker options that you can get quite frequently, and this weapon, even with its ink efficiency, can actually get a decent amount of them and has incredibly threatening one and two shot combos with it, having quite good synergy with the special. I think this weapon just needs to have a way cheaper sub and maybe a little bit less of the ink efficiency problem and it could be a lot better. I'd mainly like to see the whiting frames toned back a bit but at least it's in way better of a spot than dynamo is which is clearly what this weapon is very similar to. I'm sorry dynamo players you guys are not getting anything in terms of buffs or gold dynamo roller you guys deserve better. To wrap up the mid tiers in this ranking we have the custom dually sculptures and this weapon is just so close to being in the high tier but it's just just not quite there. The main weapon for starters is pretty solid. It's a little bit ink hungry, but not too bad by any means. The main issue it has is its kill time and overall damage, as it is pretty low, especially with main power no longer being a thing in this game. That means the fights it takes can be pretty long, and while it's great at surviving those fights, it does mean the pressure it applies can be limited, and it's very difficult at higher levels of play where people are very good at getting kills quickly, especially with things like shooters, which are still quite common at the moment. That being said, it's pretty good, especially in double duel comps. It's a great pair for something like a Dually or a Tetra, and its special and sub are both clearly built for enabling another more aggressive weapon. Beacon is great for regrouping and giving jumps in, and it doesn't hurt too much since this weapon has quite a bit of painting range and mobility to set them up in nice places. And Super Chump is exactly what you run with weapons that want to dive in. They're mini meat shields that apply damage and paint, and the buffs with it have been pretty nice. It's much easier to have chumps in the right location without them going too far, the damage is much easier to combo off of, and the initial paint boost when when they land makes it much easier to fight even before they explode. However, while the special is definitely a lot better, it still struggles quite a bit. It's in the weaker half and they're just still not super threatening. I think a bit of a radius buff for the damage would definitely be something that helps it and maybe some bonus utility like location if you get hit by one for like five seconds. That could be cool. Overall though, the inconsistent main weapon damage on top of the mediocre special means it's just not anything to write home about but can definitely thrive in certain comps. Before we get on the high tiers, I want to talk to you a little bit about Metro Inc., which is a Splatoon organization hosting Gridlock, a two-day Splatoon land in New York City, featuring a 32-team 4v4 tournament and table turf side event for those of you competing in that. During the event, you can enjoy Splatoon-themed food and drink, merchandise tables, free play setups, and more. You can experience all the hype of seeing and playing Splatoon on a main stage with a packed crowd. If you want to go make memories with them, it'll be in Brooklyn this July. Info and registration will be available on start.gg slash gridlock, and will also be available in the link in the description. Anyway, moving up into the high tiers. First up, we have the Sorella Tenabrella. Ten players have been absolutely winning this update. Not only did their shield launch glitch where you could die behind it finally get actually fixed, but it also has an absolute banger of a kit. Ink Mine has always been great on Ten, just for setting up traps and applying more pressure, and with the shield you can very easily take space to use them in more effective positions, and Trizuka with Ten shield is just scary. Normally, Trizuka is a very inconsistent special to get value out of with the limited shots and the vulnerability. However, being able to use it behind a shield is not only a great option to immediately kill something like a stamper that would normally break it very easily, but it's also easier to use it in cover and more aggressive positions, meaning your reliability with the special is up drastically. Ten as a whole still struggles from having a lot of specials and main weapons that can shred the shield, but the amount of resources it takes to do that is arguably worth it a lot, especially now that the ten player can more consistently play around it. And that on top of an amazing kit has started to give it a bit of a niche, and we've been seeing a lot more players invested into looking at tent comps, so I can't wait to see what happens with it. Now let's fix the other two, please. After that weapon is the Heavy Splatling Deco, and this weapon has been in a bit of an interesting spot. It definitely plays to a bit different comps than the Vanilla Heavy. Well, sort of. While V-Heavy was good with aggressive stuff before, Ballpoint is a lot better for it now, since Inkjet is a great way to recall your team in. However, Kraken, with a lot of quick respawn and stealth jumps coming in, can be great as well. It not only allows you to give jumps, but you can stall for quite a long time, chasing people away and trying to keep people off where you want 
to be. The special can still definitely struggle at times, especially with countering a lot of the stronger stuff that could be used at a distance and isn't great versus Inkjet outside of camping the recall, as well as Heavy has quite a bit of vulnerability when it ends. However, as a whole, the amount of aggressive power Heavy has with Kraken is unrivaled by any other Splatling, and Point Sensor is totally solid with it to be able to give it some extra utility, as Splatlings don't mind subs too much and are fine with stuff that lingers like that considering its charge time. I think this weapon is in a solid spot, and if Ball Point got toned back a bit, it might be in an even better one. At number 4, we have the Rapid Blaster Pro Deco. This was the surprise kit of the patch, one that was clearly way better than a lot of people thought it would be when initially revealed. Part of that is due to the fact that this is actually 180p. After seeing Rapid Deco for some reason being turned into a 210p weapon, I was really worried if this thing was going to be cheap at all, but it's surprisingly 180p. This means it can get killer well quite frequently, and this special is amazing for the weapon with both its tracking capabilities and chip damage, and it especially combines well with Rapid Pro's long distance shots, making it a very reliable way for the weapon to move forward as well as get the rest of its team in. On top of that, Line Marker is actually pretty nice for this thing. Not only is it a pretty interesting movement tool, but its combos with Rapid itself and Killer Whale are both rather valuable. They're much more reliable than I initially thought, and in some situations can be quite useful. And on top of that, you can even use the Killer Whale to refill your ink tank and give you a third marker for occasional combos if people get a bit greedy. This weapon seems to have a very healthy niche against certain comps, and while it still struggles competing with Ball Point directly, definitely has places where it can thrive and is capable of keeping Inkjet in check. However, I don't think it's the best blaster we got with this update. At number three is the S Blast 92. This main weapon is just really good. It's definitely not as amazing as some people say it is. It's no Ball Point, don't get me wrong, but it does give blasters a lot of stuff they've been wanting for a while, mainly a lot of reliability. The close range giant blast radius area of effect mode, while killing slowly, is rather reliable to get trades or damage in team fights, meaning it's much more easy for this weapon to have an impact. The ink efficiency is significantly better than quite a lot of the weapons, and on top of that is the ability to move and shoot with perfect accuracy, at even slightly longer range than range blaster with a faster shot speed. This means the weapon can be a lot more mobile than you might think, and the long range pressure that it can provide, even with a smaller blast radius, is still incredibly threatening with its ability to potentially one-shot. However, there is of course one major downside with this weapon, the kit. Let's start with the actual worst part, sprinkler. Blasters really want tools to be able to control enemy spacing, not just to cover its paint. Don't get me wrong, the extra paint sprinkler provides is nice, and sometimes it's okay for movement or a tiny bit of shield tanking. In fact, funny enough, it can actually tank for your reef slider starter frame sometimes, which has actually worked for me in a few matches, but for the most part, the utility on this thing is pretty damn small. It's at least cheap, so you get four shots after it and five shots if you have comeback, which means it's pretty easy to just kind of throw these while you're in fights, especially with the low whiting frames. But the value they get is pretty minimal. I'm surprised to say, though, that slider is nowhere near as bad on this thing as I thought it would be, and in general, doesn't actually feel that bad to use. Don't get me wrong, it's not a good special by any means, but it works with this weapon quite well. This is something that really wants to go in, get damage, and has quick respawn for if it dies, and Slider does the same thing. It's gonna go in, and the 70 damage hitbox is pretty massive, so you're probably gonna hit something, as well as doing good damage to objects. On top of that, it does actually help with its two weakest modes, as it's quite good to cap zone and splat zones and pop the Rainmaker shield in Rainmaker, giving it a bit more flexibility. That being said, it's still a slider, you're still gonna die a lot, and even if the weapon is prepared to die, that's still not great, and it doesn't provide anywhere near as much potential as another special could if it was better. At least it's pretty cheap at 180p. This is a weapon that definitely has a lot of potential, but I hope we get another kit soon to really see if this thing could be a top tier in the right hands, because that would be awesome to see a blaster finally make that spot after so long. Finally though, we have two weapons that I definitely rank as top tiers in this update, and with a close second place, we have the Light Petrodulis. I'm not gonna rag on about the sprinkler again. It's not good for the weapon and has very similar utility for blaster, except in this case, it doesn't even need it for movement, so arguably a bit less. But at least this one is getting a slightly more useful special. 190 Zipcaster is pretty crazy on this thing. Tetras have wanted Zipcaster for a long time, and it's just as crazy as we thought it could be. There's a lot of unpredictability with how you can descend quickly, the rolls are amazing for your landing, and in general, it allows Tetra to dive weapons much more easily than it already could and leave recalls in aggressive, annoying positions that force the enemy team to sit back. You can't just let that thing recall and get behind you, but you better have enough resources to reliably kill its landing even with the rolls it has. Tetra can still struggle a bit into certain matchups, especially now that it doesn't have its bomb, and sometimes the Zipcaster can slow it down compared to Reef Slider, which keeps the tempo a bit better, but for the most part, this is a good kit on an insanely good weapon. And number one is the Splatana Wiper Deco. A real shock, I know. I will 
will say that this weapon is definitely nowhere near as good as a lot of people think. Wiper does struggle killing quite a bit, and while Wiper players are getting better at it, mostly by mixing in charge slashes more, it's definitely a problem. Torpedo helped this thing a lot with making up for its weaknesses, and Stamp did as well. And while Missiles is a much better special that can still help when fighting, you're not going to get it as much as Stamp. This is a very team-dependent kit. You want things that can help its fighting capability, play around its beacons, and move quickly to work off of the missiles. If you have that, this is an incredibly threatening weapon that gives you access to one of the strongest specials in the game, something not many other weapons can even use right now, as Flings is just the zone's niche and Goo and Reflux are a bit weak to be played at higher levels. And considering Light Tetras is, well, also comp-dependent, I think it's fair to say that this Platana Wiper Deco definitely fits being a little bit better. With that all being said, that's my list. If you enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing, and let me know what you think of the new weapons in the comments.